really going on with their food, they do stop eating it. It actually does work. Activism does work. And Gary, I agree with you. We're making tangible, real results that matter, and we're defunding them with our dollar. And coming up, we're going to talk about some other ways we're beating GMOs, Monsanto. We are going to get into the Pope thing, and we're going to talk about some action that you can take and some real solutions. Thanks again for watching The Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi with Joe Biggs. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in as we lead in to this long segment of the hour with some motley crew to get everyone upset about this new breaking headline. Court overturns ruling against NSA. This is from The Hill. A federal appeals, appeals court on Friday overturned a lower court ruling against the, natu the NSA controversial collection method. So they're saying it's totally fine that the NSA collects every single thing that you do and you can't do anything about it. Because, Joe, that's what freedom is all about, collecting everything you do, even though you've done nothing wrong, and storing it in massive databases, which, by the way, I personally went to and was kicked out of. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, we went to the NSA because we oh, thought... Yeah, that's, how, long, how long ago was that? It was about two years ago, up there in Utah, in near Park City area, and we went up to the NSA data center, and I had a simple request. I wanted to know some ID. I, I wanted ID from one of the NSA workers there. I wanted to see their ID, and I wanted to look through their phone history and just look at everything they've ever done, because that's what they do to me, and I get to do that to them, too. Now... My plan was to actually go into the NSA center, park my vehicle and go up and ask them for their information and just kind of talk to them and say, hey, why can't I look at your internet browsing history? I want, I want to check that out. But I actually didn't get even farther than the parking lot because a bunch of NSA security trooper people next to the military base that's on swarmed out in their huge Chevys with a dog that is trained to murder people, a massive German shepherd. And I was told that I was lucky the dog wasn't hungry that day because he was going to bite my testicles off. And uh, I was totally uh, escorted off and I was arrested by these NSA agents under what authority, I'm not sure, and told that if I ever come back, I'm going to military prison. So that was not very friendly of them. That was not a very friendly encounter. The, NS the article is on screen from InfoWars.com. But they're there for our good, though. NSA goons threaten reporters with attack dogs and that's exactly what happened uh, that they said i was lucky the dogs weren't hungry and insinuated that uh they were gonna bite my testicles off which probably would not have been a very fun experience hey, that's the NSA. But hey, that's fine that's fine the the federal appeals court said that's great they're awesome and we're gonna sh we're showing the video on screen right now as but they they're there for your protection vehicles. though they're there for my protection and they i forgot to mention the key point they took they took our cameras away and started to rip out the cards, the um, you know the the memory cards, SD everything like cards that. And SD cards, rip them out. But thankfully, we we're able to capture the footage. But that's totally legal. Let's go talk about this Pope story. Then we're going to get back to the calls because I kept saying I would cover it. This is from AP. Pope shifts to shared goals with Obama as papal visit nears. Sweeping into office in 2009, President Barack Obama captured near rock star status around the world among millions who saw him as the embodiment of a new sense of social purpose. Oh, how sweet. Now that baton has largely been passed to Pope Francis, whose visit to the White House next month will put his common cause with Obama on vivid display. A common cause of destroying the country and destroying its economic ability, while also siphoning all of its riches and wealth to the same quote-unquote Democrats who are looting it blind. That sounds like an amazing pope, doesn't it? Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, religion, hey. Hey, that's very Catholic, right? Steal everything, loot everything, and destroy it. I'm being sarcastic. Obviously, Catholics are real, tr true Catholics are against that, and I know that very well. Many people in my family understand that and are true Christians. Let's go to Adam, Adam. who wants to talk about the notorious Donald Trump, which is on everyone's mind, and it seems like we've talked about it, but everyone just wants to keep getting into it, and I understand why, because it's an attractive subject. Adam, what's on your mind? Well, since I've been on hold so long and listening to you guys, I have some other points I could make. All right, on. throw them out. Let's hear them. Right. Let's do it. Well, basically, I got two. I got one for you, Joe, and one for you, Anthony. The, Joe, the point for you, Joe, is about basically how I feel. If they take away guns, it's just going to get worse. Humans as a species are so successful because of how inventive we are and how creative we are. And if a human has ill will, they're still going to get the job done with the Boston bombing or the trade, you know, the trade center being taken down with planes. They're just going to figure out an even more sinister way to kill people. So guns is not, you know, taking away guns, as you know, is not going to stop 
human beings, we are a successful, creative species. It's all about controlling people's minds and technology. It's keeping you in the dark because your knowledge is power. And if you want to use knowledge for a bad thing, it's powerful, you know? So, and then the other thing I wanted to make a point for the GMOs is basically I'm in the business of selling rare fruit. And I, have on an everyday basis, have to kind of keep my feelers out. So I am aware of what I'm selling and who's getting it and what they're doing with it. Cause I sell rare seeds and you know, I feel like I'm in a, in a special position where I have to be responsible. Well, that's good that you are responsible because you know, most of the seed out there is at risk of being contaminated by GMOs on a major, major scale to the point where organic farms are forced to sue neighboring GMO farms because just the wind can blow the GMO seed into the organic farms. And it kind of reminds me of a 2007 report about GMO alfalfa, where Monsanto had these testing grounds for GMO alfalfa before the USDA approved them. And the alfalfa was being spread to near, nearby farms, and they didn't think to test for it, because why would they? There's no such thing at this point as approved GMO alfalfa. And there were organic barrels, and they were tested, and they had GMOs inside of them from this GMO alfalfa seed. So there is a huge risk with GMO contamination that it could spread and it could be out of control. And I would, I would, I would push to those people that say GMOs are safe, at least, they, oh, we think they're safe right now. Well, what about in 100 years if our entire food supply is contaminated with genetically modified organisms? What then? We know the risks are untold. They're truly untold. And the Roundup alone in the, in the crops is killing people. And Joe, if you have any comments on that before we go to the next caller. Well, it always reminds me of that scene from The Matrix when the guy, the, the Meryl Vinji or whatever, is sitting there and he's eating the steak. And he's like, I see the steak. I smell it. My brain tells me it's there. It tastes good, but I know it's not there. You know, and I think that a lot now when I go out and I, I get vegetables or I, I get food, I'm sitting there thinking like, is this an actual chicken or is this a chicken that's been beefed up so big on steroids? Because really, when's the last time we probably actually had a real chicken that's, you know, chickens aren't that big. But now you see them at these farms, see these this footage of them. They're giant. They're like Hulk Hogan's with feathers. Right. You, know, you see these giant, large tomatoes that could literally be like a melon of some sort. And it, it's funny because I watch movies and they're supposed to be set in like Roman times or even, you know, the 1600s or something. And they have bananas, modern day bananas, or they have modern day oranges and stuff like that. Our food supply outside of the genetic modification, which is a whole another dimension, has been selectively bred into this sugar laden, weird fruit that actually didn't exist hundreds of years ago at all. I mean, bananas were kind of like short, stubby brownish mm -hmm. type things that weren't nearly as sweet. Now the idea of a banana is this like sweet, super yellow thing that everyone loves. Our food supply has completely warped. It's been completely selectively bred. That's yeah. not to say that it's the same as, as GMO though, because that just means, you know, it's like a dog. You get a, a German shepherd from breeding certain type of dogs. You get a Yorkie from another one, a, a pit bull from another one, blah, blah, blah. As opposed to splicing the gene of a scorpion into the dog, which is genetic modification. So it's a world of difference. But our food supply is, is, is changed completely. And I call it the new health paradigm versus the old health paradigm. Let's say pre-1900s is the, is the old paradigm in which an apple is an apple. You're not going to have pesticides and herbicides killing you when you eat an apple. You're not going to have genetic modification of any kind. You're going to have a pretty balanced diet, even if you just eat whatever is out there. In the new health paradigm, when you go out to the grocery store, an apple is no longer just an apple. It has a film outside of it. It has herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, you name it. It could even be GMO now with the new Arctic apple. So we're living in a new health paradigm where we don't even know what we're eating unless we super investigate our food. Let's go to Danny in Texas. He wants to talk about the economy and a potential economic crash. What's up, Danny? Hi, Anthony. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. Okay, let me get y'all figure here. All right. So what's on your mind, Danny? What, what do you want to talk uh, about about well, the economic sorry, crash? I, I took an extra minute there to get y'all's figure, but uh, I think it would be better. Listen, uh, I've been wanting to try to get in uh, about a book that's written by... Jonathan Kahn, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, on the one hand, I think uh, Alex has probably read it, but I don't know. And it's well, what, what's in this book? What's what's this book about? It, it's, it, the name of it is The Harbinger, and it's a, it's written in story form by a guy that puts together all of the uh, Jewish uh, traditions and, and um uh, 
uh, warnings from God uh, in uh, Isaiah chapter 9, uh, uh, verse 10. Uh, and what he does, he ties it all together into the, the, from the fall of Israel uh, directly uh, across to 9-11. And then he, uh, and, and he states that the reason for this is, uh, is because of the Shemitah. You, are, are you familiar with the Shemitah? That's and interesting. That's tradition. definitely not my area of expertise. But apparently uh, the producers just said that Alex has had this guy that you're, I guess, the author on the Nightly News, and he's talked at length about it. Uh, Joe, if you're familiar with any of this. No, but I mean, I've heard Leanne talk about the, the Shemitah thing before. Uh, I think it was a couple months ago. She did a, a story in here with a guy about that. But yeah, I'm not so, really that well. So are you saying there's area. an economic crash prediction you'd like to make? Well, well, yeah, what what it comes down to is he doesn't exactly say this in the book, but the end of this this uh, this period of seven years is what you, uh, which is what the Shemitah is about, when debts are supposed to be forgiven on the last day of the seventh year, and that's in the uh, uh, the Jewish month of Elah, and that happens to coincide with September. In fact, September the 29th. And so uh, it, it, the book itself is a is an outstanding piece, but it will just blow you away how everything ties into uh, the Bible and Jewish tradition, and and uh, and and so what uh, the last uh, well, you know it, that is a, very interesting. Uh, my 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 I've heard a lot about September. Some of the most insane things you could possibly hear, and some of the asteroids. most rational things. Yeah, I've heard about asteroids blowing the planet up. I've heard about bank holidays. I've turned. I've heard about insider stock trading that's going on that's going to mess everything up. I've heard about China collapsing in different ways. I've heard everything you could possibly imagine about September and October from people that I think are way out there, and also people that I think are super sound of mind and super intelligent and know what they're talking about. So I have I have no clue really what's going to go on. All I know is it's important to secure yourself no matter what. It's I mean, at the end of the always. day, are you going to sit around and? worry about something that might happen or just go ahead and start preparing. Right. I mean, I would I'm prepare. prepared anyway. Yeah, be I'm prepared. prepared anyway. And if something happens, whatever the case may be, an asteroid, whatever it could be, just know that you've got your family together. You've got a plan. You're prepared. You've got food. You've got whatever it could be to get through it. And don't spend all the time sitting there worrying about what it might possibly be right. because that takes your focus away. Get food, store food, you know, water, all that. And just... See what happens. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you, you want to be doing what you love anyway in terms of making money and financials and everything like that. Living day-to-day -day is obviously going to be a challenge in those times. Let's go to another call, but first and foremost, I also want to say, you know, if there is something catastrophic like an asteroid destroying the Earth, I mean, you, you, that's, it's going to happen or it's not. I mean, you know, There's nothing we're, you can we're do. going to die or we're not going to die. I could die right now. I could die tomorrow. I could have a heart attack tomorrow. You definitely have to enjoy life, prepare for what's coming, try to see, try to do your own research and figure out your take on it. All right, let's talk about Matt. You want to go to Matt in Washington? Yeah, Matt in Washington. He wants to Sheriff talk Ozzie. about Sheriff Ozzie. What's going on, Matt? Hey, you guys. Uh, I was up at the rally with Joe and those guys. We had a lot, we had a real good time. It's nice to hear you guys on the fourth hour today. Uh, right on. Thanks a lot. I, I, uh, have you guys seen Ozzie's two-hour presentation on the myth of police militarization? Um, I actually haven't seen it yet, but I've heard about it. Uh, tell me more about it. Well, um, it's it's just a it's a two hour presentation he did here back in June, and so I saw I watched most of it, and and I hit him up on Facebook and I said, hey, you know, Alex Jones wants to debate you. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And his response was that Alex Jones doesn't have the courage to debate him, and neither did Matt Shea. Well, that's funny because uh, we went up there almost a year ago, and specifically to debate this guy, especially after those comments came out from one of their uh, officers about the MRAP being used for constitutionalists and how they stockpile uh, weapons and ammo and how we're, you know, we're these evil bad people. And we showed up, there was myself, Darren McBreen, uh, Travis Knight, and we went out there, we went to confront this guy, and then all of a sudden he goes on this unexpected vacation, tucks his tail between his legs and runs off, and the whole time we're out there for four or five days, everyone's like, there's these Aussie spottings where people saw the sheriff like in civilian attire at, at a restaurant somewhere, ducking and dodging. He, he, that's what he does. This guy is 
a puppet for the SPLC. The, you know, that's a complete and total dirtbag garbage group anyway.